Welcome to this lecture about different measures that can be used to describe the central tendency of a dataset. In this lecture we'll have a look at the mean, median and mode. When we summarize data we usually use a measure for the central tendency which is the value that represents the central position of the data as well as some measure that gives us information about the spread of the data. In this lecture, we'll look at different measures for the central tendency. Let's first have a look at the mean, also called the average, or the arithmetic mean. The mean is simply the sum of the values of interest divided by the size of the sample, which is the number of values that we have. For example, let's say that we want to calculate the mean body height of the following five individuals. Person number one has a body height of 160 centimeters whereas person number 2 has a height of 180 centimeters, and so forth. To calculate the mean, we simply sum the heights of the 5 individuals and divide by 5, since our sample size is 5. The sum of all the body heights is 865. When we divide this sum by 5, we get a value of 173. Therefore, the mean body height of these 5 individuals is 173 centimeters. The following formula is commonly used to represent the mean. It is important that we understand this formula because its notations are commonly used in other formulas in statistics. A ladder with a horizontal line above usually denotes the sample mean of something. In this case, we call this notation x bar, which represents that we calculate the mean of the variable x. In this formula, xi, also called x sub i, is a notation for our individual measurements or observations, whereas n represents the sample size. Little n is the standard notation in statistics to represent the sample size. This is the summation notation, which tells us that we should sum the observations xi as i goes from 1 to n. In our example, n is equal to 5 because we have observations of body heights from 5 individuals. Thus, this notation simply tells us that we should sum 5 values. In our example, the numerator tells us that we should sum the 5 observations, where x1 could represent the height of the first person, x2 the height of the second person, and x3 the height of the third person, and so forth. The mean is simply the sum of the 5 observations divided by 5. We'll now have a look at the median, which is a different measure to describe the central tendency. The median can be thought of as the middle value in the dataset. To calculate the median, we first need to sort the data. Then we find the middle value of the sorted data. This middle value represents the median. To calculate the median height of our five individuals, we first sort the values so that the heights are ordered from the smallest to the largest value. Then we find the middle value by cancel out the values in the ends, and then we continue to cancel the values from both ends until we reach the middle value. The value in the middle is our median value. The median height of the five individuals is therefore 175 centimeters. However, if we have an even number of observations, like in this example where we have the body height of six individuals, then if we sort the heights and cancel the values from both ends, we'll end up with two values in the middle. The median is then calculated as the mean of the two middle values. In this case, we take the mean of 175 and 180 to calculate the median height of the six individuals, which is 177.5 cm. So, should we use the mean or the median to describe the central tendency of the data? In most cases, we use the mean when the data show a symmetric distribution. As an example, the salaries for these 40 workers seem to be symmetric because if we cut the data into two equal parts, the distribution looks about the same in the two regions. There are about the same number of data points in the lower part as in the upper part. 
if we look at the distribution of salaries at company B, we see that the distribution is not symmetric. In this case, we would say that the distribution is skewed. Because if we cut the data into two halves, we see that a lot more data points are located in the lower part compared to the upper part. When the data points show a symmetric distribution, the mean and the median will be very close. However, for skewed distributions, the mean will be highly influenced by extreme values. In contrast, the median is less sensitive to such extreme values because it is based on the middle value. For skewed distributions like this, the median is a better measure of the center tendency because it shows the center of the majority of the data points. To explain why the median is more appropriate for skewed distributions, let's have a look at the following example. Suppose you work at a company where only six people work and that you would like to know if your salary is good or bad relative to the other employees. The salary marked in red is your salary. If you know the salary of all the workers, you will see that your salary is much better than the other workers if you exclude the boss's salary. Your salary is in fact the best salary if you compare with the workers who have similar duties as you have. However, if we calculate the mean and the median salary for all six individuals, we see that the mean salary is relatively high because it is affected by the high salary for the boss. If you compare your salary to the mean, you might feel that your salary is quite bad because your salary is 900 euros lower than the mean. But if you instead compare to the median, you will probably feel that you have a very good salary because your salary is 200 euros larger than the median. Since the median is not affected by the extreme salary of the boss, it will give a better measure to compare your salary against the general salary at the company. As we have seen in the previous example, the mean and the median have very different features when representing the central tendency. Let's have a look at only three data points. In this example, the mean and median have the same value. If you increase the value of the data point with the highest value, the mean is starting to move towards that value. Whereas the median stays the same because the middle value has not changed. If we continue to increase the biggest value, the mean value continues to increase whereas the median value stays the same. If we continue to increase the value even more, the mean becomes even higher. Therefore, the mean is not appropriate to use when the data is skewed because it is then not a good representation of the center of the data. The third central tendency measure that we will look at is the so-called mode. The mode is the value that appears most often in a dataset. For example, suppose we have the following data. We can see that we have four sixes and that six is the most common value in this dataset. Therefore, the mode is equal to 6 in this example. However, the mode is mainly used to represent the central tendency of categorical data. Let's say that we are asked 7 individuals about their favorite color. We see that most people say that their favorite color is blue. Therefore, the mode is the category blue because most people prefer that color in this case. Thus, when we have categorical data, the mode is the most appropriate measure for the central tendency. In the next lecture, we will look at different measures to describe the spread of the data. Thanks for watching.